Hello students and welcome back to my channel Let's Learn Together. I hope all of you are doing fine and uh, all of you are staying healthy and fit and positive. Well, in my today's video, my effort is going to discuss with you the NCRT questions of the first chapter of the Vistas uh, textbook in your syllabus, class 12th English syllabus, which is uh, titled as the third less uh, the third level and it has been written by jack finney in my last video if you have watched it i discussed to you about the variety of issues which i felt was present in the story at the same time we also discussed how is it that the story shared the phenomena or the features of uh, science fiction and we talked about variety of themes which are generally present in the science fiction right so today uh, this particular video is going to be the extension of the last video and i'm trying to discuss with you as some of you post some difficulties and questions with the ncrt question ncrt questions of this chapter i thought that uh, we would be able to you know we, we should try to at least interpret the questions and that's what i'm going to do in today's video let us look at the first question under the heading reading with insight which is on page number seven Look at the first question. Uh, do you think that Charlie's uh, third level, do you think that the third level was a medium of escape for Charlie? Why? Well, do you think that it is uh, the third level which he found at the Grand Station, uh, Central Station, Central Railway Station? Do you think that that particular level was actually a medium of escape for Charlie? Well, yes, it was more than escape for Charlie, it was actually a medium or it was a portal which could actually travel back in time. It could take the travelers or the passengers from the present arena to the time, to the uh, to the time which was in past. So you, I would, if I had to answer this question, I would say yes, definitely the third level was a medium of escape for Charlie because he had wanted always to move back in time as he was disturbed by the insecurities of the modern world or the time around him and what were the insecurities the insecurities that has been given in the stories are that of the war are that of the economic depression it could be of various other insecurities it could be emotional problems it could be variety of things which are uh, present in the uh, present political and social scenario which uh, Charlie inhabit so he would definitely want to go back to time but there is one thing that I want to uh, mention over here is obviously when you read the question the first thing that strikes your mind is to say yes we all have a tendency to say yes because we want to say that yes it was a Charlie's uh, uh, it was a medium which actually became an escape for Charlie but you must understand that by only writing that uh, answer we are in a way giving an indication um, that uh, that particular medium or that particular third level came out as a result of the psychological or a subconscious desire that uh, Charlie had nurtured in his mind because of the insecurity outside which is not the case actually we must understand that this particular portal this particular place which could actually you know make the people travel from present to past had existed there independent of charlie's desire of moving back in past because actually if you have read the complete story you know it's not charlie who is not he has been able to find it out but he has never been able to travel back in time the one who has been able to travel back in time is sam the psychiatrist friend of charlie therefore please do not while answering this question do not just write that it was a medium of escape for charlie only or it was a medium of escape as a result of which got created as a result of a kind of uh, a psychological desire which charlie had in his head it was actually it had already existed there the so science fiction stories present these kind of possibilities which is right now at present completely out of the human you know it it, ex it, it it is something which does not exist within the boundaries of human consciousness we cannot think of moving back in time we might have a desire of moving back in time like the narrator of the poem childhood written by marcus netton in your class 11th has a desire to move back in time because he finds that time quite innocent when he was loved with everybody but then he cannot go back because he can only find it in a face of a little child if you remember right so we might all have the desire but we also realize and understand that physically it is not possible 
science fiction presents us these particular possibilities in terms of uh, these kind of wormholes or the portals which are actually physically present there and the characters can move from present to past or past to future or they can travel through and within the time right so you must understand while answering this question you can write yes it was a medium of escape but it could never actually become a medium of escape for charlie because he could not move back in time it could have become a medium of escape for charlie if he would have been able to use it which he could not do it was more or less it became a medium of escape for sam and not for charlie so if you're writing an answer as yes please also tell that actually it could not become it it was not a complete medium because he could not use it okay it was there he knew it he felt its presence he knew about his presence but he could not use it so more or less it was it became a medium of escape for sam who was more practical in his approach and he was a psychiatrist more than for charlie it was a medium of escape for sam and not for charlie although charlie was uh, the founder of it he found it out but then he could not use it right so you can write the answer either ways you can write the answer as yes the third level was a medium of escape for charlie but then he could not use it okay then the next question is why so if you're writing the question yes then you will write about how badly he felt about the variety of insecurities that had surrounded him that is why he wanted to go back but at the same time if you're writing no then you have to write down why was it not a medium of escape because it was not being used by charlie but it was used by sam therefore it was it could not become a medium of escape for charlie but it could become a medium of escape for sam his psychiatrist friend so you can write any answer but most probably you have to write an answer with a complete uh, uh, with the complete set of proofs from the story whichever answer you are deciding to write please pick up the right instances uh, from the story to um, to press your answer or to support your answer let us look at the next question what do you infer from sam's letter to charlie now this is quite easy most of you have been able to do it most of you have been able to positively attempt it well we infer that sam's letter uh, to charlie was a complete proof of the fact that time travel is possible first inference second inference it was been possible uh, uh, it was completely possible by human beings to use uh, it and sam has been able to travel back in time and he has been living there and he found that the past time was quite good right so it uh, tells us two or three things first thing that sam has been able to travel back in past second important thing that time travel is possible and third important thing is that charlie's imagination about the time of past was quite correct because that was the time of uh, quietness and calmness so these three inferences at least you can make uh, you can feel like making more inferences also but but once again you need to uh, understand that all these inferences have to be supportive of whatever is given in the story okay let's move on to the third question the modern world is full of insecurities fear war worry and stress what are the ways in which we attempt to overcome them variety of ways this is a, a, a com completely subjective answer wherein you can talk about variety of ways of dealing with the variety of stress that we have now it, it might not just be the stress of war but in the present times we all are dealing with the stress and the stress of this deadly pandemic that is that has almost captured the complete world into it isn't it so how is it that we're dealing with it we're trying to keep ourselves as positive as possible so what are your ways of dealing with this pandemic okay you can think about it so you can indulge yourself in your hobbies you can indulge yourself in some kind of social work you can indulge yourself in some kind of physical activities you can indulge in uh, uh, meditative activities you can at the same time indulge uh, with uh, doing something with whatever you are good at and then passing it on to the different kind of people with the variety of technological ways that are present around you for example if you are good at singing then you can make singing videos and upload it on youtube and you can also take some very uh, uh, you know small and basic singing classes for those who want to learn this is how you are making the world a better place to live by giving your talent or by teaching your talent to others so there are variety of ways i'm not giving an answer to it because you have to develop your answer for yourself some of the ways in which we attempt to overcome could be 
well my answer could be that i would be more i would i would do everything whatever is within my approach to stay positive and healthy and fit that is very important next important thing is i would indulge myself in activities which will keep me mentally and physically active and fit third is i would know what my hobbies are and i would try to make myself a better person by sharpening those skills i would try to learn more skills and try to to uh, push back the horizons of my potential i would try to uh, benefit the life of other people by by doing whatever i'm good at so if i'm good at teaching then probably i'll i'll try to teach as many people as possible uh, at any time right so there are a variety of ways you can find out your own ways of dealing with it and uh, and and this is probably the right time to answer this question because we're actually in a time of greatest worry stress and insecurity how is it that we're dealing with it and how it important it is to deal with it because we have no option to give up giving up is never an option so how is it to deal with it think about it and write down your answers okay next fourth question is do you see an inter intersection of time space in the story so intersection of time and space in the story what does intersection means intersection basically means if two things meet up when two things meet up that particular point of meeting for example two things when meet up then the particular point where two things meet that is called intersection okay so here two parameters that have been given to us are time and space so do you think that there is an intersection of time and space you know, in the story well yes there are intersections first intersection is the third level of the grand central railway station itself because that is the point which is present in the present times to which charlie belongs to and it is also the time which is also is which also belongs to the past 1894 because that is the station which takes the train from 1900s to 1894 and that is why it becomes a one junction from where a person of 1900 20th century can come and go to 19th century at the same time a person from a 19th century can come and enter into the world of 20th century so definitely that particular station becomes one intersection of time and space another intersection of time and space uh, we are able to see uh, that letter of sam sam's letter that reaches out to to charlie is also uh, an example of how uh, there is this intersection of time that is been seen so earlier uh, the grand Ra uh, railway station was a intersection of space okay it's a intersection of space i would say the intersection of time also because then you are moving in different times through that particular um, junction in the space so it's a intersection of both time and space and the letter of the sam also reflects there is an intersection because the letter has been written in 1894 which reaches out to charlie is somewhere in 20th century so definitely that letter also is an example of how time and space intersect with each other in fact uh, the stories of uh, time travel and the stories of time slippage uh, the one which was there in uh, the adventure by jens narlikar in class 11th that story this story basically depend upon the intersection of time and space because if there is until there is an intersection one person cannot move from one place to another one no from one space to another one we need to have a junction like we have junctions in the railway stations so from one major junction delhi junction there could be various variety of trains possible to different spaces similarly there has to be junction in between different two kinds of times also like present and past until there is a junction possible one cannot move on so definitely there would be uh, compulsorily an intersection of time and space would be there in time travel stories in uh, time slippage stories uh, in in a variety of other stories also like um, the appearances of extraterrestrial organisms on our planet this is also the intersection of because they are traveling through time from their planets to come to us and uh, they are definitely traveling through times right so most of the times in science fiction stories there would definitely be a intersection of time and space right so model your answer accordingly next question is question number 5 apparent illogicality sometimes turn out to be a futuristic projection discuss right apparent illogicality let us first try to decode this particular phrase what does it mean to be illogical anything which a human mind cannot process any piece of information or knowledge which a human mind cannot process through its rational faculties 
is known as or generally categorized as illogical logical are those which which are known to us logical are those which ways which we can understand and we have been able to devise those ways over a period of time now the logics of one time could be different from the logics of another time let me explain this with an example for example 20 years back from now or maybe 20 30 years back from now probably 30 years back from now people could not believe that a face to face calling would be possible okay we used to see on um, uh, in mythological programs wherein uh, a person with uh, wherein a person with some kind of uh, supernatural powers could uh, you know in, in television you would have seen a person with supernatural powers could somehow present the picture of person who is present in some other space and they would be able to converse with each other so we had always dismissed it as the imaginative powers of the directors or of the storytellers right but today it is possible and today most of us are able to talk to each other uh, through skype or through uh, your whatsapp chats and variety of chats are possible today internet is one of the things so uh, but then 30 years back 40 years back from now could we imagine talking to people at different places miles away they're sitting together but still they're able to sit back and look at people's face and talk to them like how they used to do back uh, 20 years back in mythological programs you know so this was quite illogical at that time but now it is so that is what i said that if you would have told this kind of invention to a person who was 30 years back from now for them it would have been illogical because their mind would not been able to process this information according to the information that was present to the mind at that time now it is quite possible and easy for us to understand it because it is uh, present this technology is present with us at the same time there are uh, you know you would have seen this another kind of fact also in uh, mythological programs where a person would suddenly appear out of the thin air uh, out of nowhere a person would just suddenly appear and uh, you know he would be present on the scene and after completing the task he would once again within a blink of a second it would, within a blink or within a fraction of a second the person would just disappear this particular technology we still don't have right but this might be possible after 50 years 70 years or maybe 20 years who knows so this is still illogical to us but then once the technology is ready to us then this will same thing will become logical therefore now the question is asking the apparent illogicality sometimes turn out to be a futuristic projection discuss well yes apparent illogicality could become a, a, a futuristic projections because of the advancements and uh, uh, the development that uh, human civilization is making so there are variety of uh, fields of life where people have made tremendous uh, humankind has made tremendous uh, developments and uh, something which was impossible yesterday is very much possible today for example telephones internet televisions and uh, more, you know movement of uh, human beings to to moon or to mars and in this way uh, time travel could also become which is apparently right now is, is still illogical to us we are still looking at it as the imagination of the author but next 120 years 150 years 200 years or maybe in the next 50 years time travel could be a very uh, simple technology which could be available to the human beings very easily isn't it although it will have its own consequences like any kind of advancement and development has but definitely this technique could become completely normal to us and it could lead to a futuristic projection so today's imagination today's uh, whatever the authors or the writers are imagining today could become um, an invention for tomorrow or an invention of tomorrow right so discuss variety of inventions you could discuss some of the inventions over here and you could also talk about how time travel could become a reality of tomorrow right let us move on to the next one philately helps keep the past alive discuss other ways in which this is done what do you think of the human tendency to constantly move between the past 
present and the future. Now, what is philately? Philately is basically a habit or a tendency of people to collect the stampage. Uh, sorry, uh, stamp postages. I'm sorry, stamp postages. So most of you would have done it when you were kids, of uh, this collection of stamps from the postcards. Now, actually, this habit is kind of moving away, because most of the time these days we are depending upon. Uh, phone calls or on whatsapp calls or variety of communication advanced tech communications are have uh, come into being and people have stopped depending upon uh, usage of postcards or indent letters so postages uh, postage stamps have been uh, not very much in fashion actually and they are not very much in usage uh, but even then if you you might find your parents having done that and you can actually look at how do they look like and you can go to the post office and you can have a look at them somewhere if you're sending a mail or if you're sending uh, some kind of registry mail they are required but then they are not as much required as they used to be probably 10 years back or maybe 20 years back right so it uh, helps to keep the past alive do you agree to a certain extent yes i do agree because you collect the stamps of variety of time periods and then you look at the changes in it and that is how you're able to trace the passage of time okay so yes it, it helps us to keep the past alive discuss other ways in which this is done what would be the other ways in which it is done well, there are people who have the habit of collecting coins. There are people who have the habit of collecting variety of uh, letters form, like inlet, inland letters or postcards and other things. Okay, so uh, then you can collect a variety of other antiques, antique things like music system, a very old gramophone kind of a system. So collection of antique things, collection of coins, uh, visit making visit to museums, and. Uh, indulging uh, yes making visit to historical uh, places very often this could also uh, this could also help a human being uh, keeping the past alive and the collection of photographs yes most importantly the collection of photographs these days we don't really have photographs in the hard copy forms because we have almost each one of us even a 10 year old kid carries a camera in the pocket so we keep on clipping uh, photographs and the uh, importance of photographs have reduced because it is quite easy for us now to you know click a photograph and delete it but earlier it was not so you would uh, actually get ready to get photographed it you has to be some special location and then once the photograph would be clicked by the camera then it have, would go to the studio and it would come out in number of days so photographs were important in those days so one could actually correct collect the photograph and this also takes me to the poem in class 11th that you have read title is the photograph right that was also something that kept the nostalgia alive okay so what do you think the human tendency of constantly move between the past the present and the future so why is it that one needs to uh, stay in touch with the past and keep anticipating about the future now this is the most challenging part of the question so please pay attention the first two parts were quite easy but this is the most challenging part of the question what could be the reason about why human beings would like to stay in touch with the past? I would like to take you back to the first chapter of let me go of your textbook, which is titled as The Last Lesson. There also the whole issue is about, the whole quest is about staying in touch with the language, hence staying in touch with the past, the history and the culture. So, if you have been able to uh, develop some ideas there, it will be easier for you to make a connection and try to answer this question. Because uh, the tendency of people to stay connected to their past, present and future or to keep on lingering between the past, present and future, like we can we keep on thinking about the past and we keep on anticipating what will happen in the future. The reason is, this is largely how we define ourselves. Human beings have this constant need to define their characters as individuals and also as a part of community. This is important. Who am I is the biggest question that human civilization has ever, has ever faced. All the meditative techniques, all your yogic exercises, they are directed towards this one quest which is about who am I.
okay so people and sages sages have spent years and years together going in complete isolation and just meditating trying to think about who they were now a normal human being a regular human being might not go up to that extent of going up to himalayas or into the forest and thinking and meditating for years and years together doing tapasya for years and years together of course we don't do that regularly but this question is always there at a corner of our mind who am i what am i why am i here for what is the purpose of my life and largely i derive the answer from this question of this question from the past that i have had and the future that i will be having okay so today whatever i am i am i'm nothing but the consequences of the choices that i have made in past if i feel i'm not the best version of me and if i have a technology of time travel possible with me the one thing and the first thing i'm going to do is to move back in time and somehow change some things so that i could become a better person so i could be a doctor or could be an engineer or could be a pilot or could be something else right i would just go back in time change my decision do something accordingly which will change my future also although this is still i would say apparently illogical right but it could become a futuristic projection also so why is it now coming down back to the question why is it that you know we have a tendency of constantly moving between past present and Uh, future we have this tendency because my pa- my past for example any individual's past will give them the part on the idea of their identity people derive their identity from the past and they want to build up a new identity on the basis of the future okay and this is one reason another reason could be people might just be unsatisfied with their surrounding conditions like charlie is and they might feel the past or the future as a better place to live so there could be these two possibilities which i am finding right now looking from the child looking from charlie's point of view well he wants to move back in time because he felt that time was good he felt so but then you need to think about it do you think past was always good do you think you had no problems when you were a kid do you think if you're going to move in 16th century 17th century 18th century there would be no problems every time era every period of time has its own complica- complexities and complications every time era okay but then we have this tendency of looking at past through rose colored glasses we always feel that the past was good but the present is not okay so if you have that nostalgic attitude then you might just want to move back in time because you find that place more safer and quieter but i also may want to move back in time because i i just want to know why is it that i am like this today and if i am this way then could i have changed it uh, by going back in time okay so i'm leaving you here with two possibilities one possibility is the nostalgic tendency of human beings of constantly moving back in time and uh, not feeling happy with whatever we have we don't feel satisfied that is why we have this tendency of something you know we have uh, uh, trying to fill that void that is always there which is actually created by the nostalgic tendency so that could be one reason second reason could be that we largely derive our identities from our past that is why we keep on dwelling on past be it be history or be it language be it your culture be it your a variety of other uh, aspects on which your develop uh, your identity has developed upon so that is why we are constantly uh, you know obsessed with what happened with our past and that is why it is important for us to know what happened in indian struggle for independence because if i forget my past i will not be able to make sense of my present and therefore my future is equally blurred therefore to make sense of myself as an individual or to give an identity a sense of identity to a community the past of a community or of an individual is extremely important these are the two possibilities that i'm leaving you with if you feel there are other reasons why one would like to move back in time or one would like to linger in present past and future you might have your own ideas and theory please uh, you're most welcome to write them down in your answer and discuss them and if you have any other uh, possibilities also of this particular question please do let me know in the comment section below 
let us move on to the last question of this particular chapter which is uh, you have read adventure by jent narlikar in hornbill in class 11th compare the interweaving of fantasy and reality in the two stories right right from the beginning of uh, the discussion of this particular topic uh, of this particular topic i have been time again going back to jent narlikar's the adventure isn't it uh, the reason is that it was also a science fiction story so is this so obviously the comparisons would be quite obvious and would be very common for any teachers to make uh, but then here what they are asking us to do is to compare the interweaving of fantasy and reality let us first understand what is reality and what is fantasy let us begin with the easier term which is reality now what is reality reality outside of me is anything which is present uh, which is present visibly outside for example that window is a reality that wall behind me is a reality right my two hands are my reality i am able to sit with the with uh, before a camera and talk to you that is a reality and this is called an objective reality you must understand there are varieties of realities possible reality can never be one there is no the real thing present in this universe this is something that you must understand outside reality or the objective reality could be similar to all of us for example anyone who enters this particular room will find that window behind me and say that yes there is a window right this is called an objective or an external reality okay now there is a subjective reality also now subjective reality could be the reality of a particular individual okay now what i'm trying to get at is i'm i'm not trying to take you much deeper into the issues of realities because then it i might just have to make one another video on that uh, but all i'm trying to un make you understand is that uh, as for now understand reality as the physical world outside of us but then you must also understand that there is a physical world inside of our mind and that constitutes our own and individuals own individual uh, reality which might be different from someone else's reality okay uh, now let us uh, try to interrogate the word fantasy <coughs> what is fantasy fantasy is a kind of excessive imagination it is not just imagination but a kind of excessive and an over exaggerated imagination which is not possible logically now once again i'm using the word logically because all i'm trying to say is that logic is something which is processed and understood by your rational faculties something which is based upon reasons so today if i'm imagining myself flying on my own without any equipment at all or just presenting or just going or reaching out to a different uh, time in space or a point in space like in a fraction of a second that is fantasy that is not reality at present at least it is not reality okay reality could be that if i want to go to chennai from delhi i will have to, for saving my time i will have to take a flight okay this is reality this is possible but if i want to move from delhi to chennai in a fraction of a second within a blink of an eye is it possible now this is my fantasy this is not reality because this is an excessive imagination an imagination which is beyond the limits of rationality right now we don't have such technology so this is at present this is fantasy to us okay now once again fantasy is also spatio temporal temporal now spatio temporal means something which is within the boundaries of the same space and the time which is something which is fantasy today might become a reality of tomorrow that is how fantasy and reality are also interlinked they are like sisters but sisters who do not get along with each other quite well okay so somewhere at different time these people may these sisters may come together but right now they are at you know they have quarreled and they are not with each other this you must understand so today's fantasy could become a reality of tomorrow now <coughs> let us come back to the question compare the interweaving of fantasy and reality in the two stories let us begin with jent narlikar's story 
In Jant Narlikar's story, you find that Professor Gaithonde moves from one particular universe to another universe. He somehow slips through the time. And he moves into a parallel universe where the reality for him is completely different. We find that in the parallel world, the India is has never been subjugated by Britishers. It has never been divided into two countries. The countries has been economically doing really, really well. And Britishers present is there, presence is there, but only for the commercial purpose or for uh, the purpose of uh, trading and commerce. Right. So how is it that this fantasy and the reality interweave there is that authors fantasizes of creating a a different India, a India which has never been through the chains of subjugation of almost three decades, and it has uh, wealthy uh, India which is uh, which is painless. I mean, uh, uh, India which has never been uh, oppressed, has never seen any kind of uh, oppression. So that is how the fantasy and reality have. But then, how is it that he's trying to make his fantasy real by? Shifting his character, major character, the protagonist, Professor Gaithonde, traveled from one universe to another universe. So he fantasizes. So how is it that the fantasy and reality is interweaving? Interweaving means intermingling with each other, connecting with each other. How is it intermingling? It is intermingling that, you know, author fantasizes a country, India, with a different past, present and a future, how does it make it real? By ensuring or by making Gaitonde move from this particular universe to a different universe. Where author's fantasy of an India which is absolutely independent financially, politically and socially is a real possibility. It's, it's a real thing over there. India is has never been subjugated. It has never been oppressed by English people. Right? This is how fantasy and reality are interviewed over there. So the fantasy of India, which has never been oppressed by people, becomes a reality in a parallel universe. Whereas in this particular story, you find uh, the Charlie's uh, fantasy of moving into past becomes reality with uh, the discovery of that uh, portal or with the discovery of that uh, particular third level at the Grand Central Railway Station. Isn't it? So here it is quite easy because we know that Charlie, uh, that Sam has been able to travel back, which means it was not just a fantasy, it could actually become a reality. That is why I'm taking you back to the question number one. Here we had been asked. If we found Char third level as a medium of escape for Charlie, that is why I said that you could actually write no also because you could never use that particular medium. Charlie could never use that particular medium. And you must also understand that that particular wormhole or that particular portal always existed there independent of Charlie's wishes to move there. Therefore, Charlie's fantasy of moving back in time becomes real uh, with the presence of this particular time portal or with the presence of his third level. That is how the fantasy and reality are coming together. Fantasy is something which exists in Charlie's head. The fantasy of moving back in 1800s or in 19th century. Uh, but, you, you know, he wants to just go back to a time when there were no wars, when there were no problems, when people lived very quite, uh, quietly and peacefully. That becomes a reality with the time travel. But not for him, but for his friend, Sam, that's how you're going to compare the interweaving of fantasy and reality in the two stories. Uh, there is one more thing that I would like to uh, put your focus on. That, uh, you know, for any uh, for author, Jack Funny, it would have been uh, more appropriate for making Charlie to go back in time and not Sam. Because it is Charlie uh, through whom we get to know that he wants to move back in time and that the past times were better. But a person who fantasizes going back in past is not able to go back in past. But it is Sam who is able to move back in past. The psychiatrist. The psychiatrist who possibly understands and supposedly understands the human mind better. Now he is somebody who is extremely practical in his approach. And he finds these kind of desires of Charlie as daydreaming. 
and extremely fantasizing right so it is sam who is moving back because then the author is giving us a clear indication that actually the time travel was not just something which is imaginary it was actually present there it was an fantasy it, it, it wasn't reality it was not a fantasy it was the fantasy in charlie's head but became the reality for somebody like sam who had never wanted to go back probably and who had been extremely rational and practical in his approach and he had always wanted to uh, he had never thought of traveling back in past because he understand human mind better he knows why is it that you know this kind of uh, nostalgic tendencies are present in the human mind okay therefore it was sam who travels back so that the writer could make his whole point of time travel real and not just because if charlie would have traveled then there would have been possibilities of the reader an advanced reader of thinking that you know charles charlie's would have traveled uh, tra charlie's traveling back in time and moving back in time 19, 1894 could is only the result of his subconscious desire nothing but imagination so he feels as if he has moved back probably he is not in real or physically moved back so to prove the point that the time travel was not just a fantasy but a reality it is sam who has been made to travel back and not charlie and charlie is still looking out for that uh, for the third level and till the story ends he has not been able to find it out okay so this is all i had to say about the chapter if you still are confused about any question be it that the the question from these seven or any other questions that you might have come across in the sample papers or it could be a doubt that you might have had kindly ask these questions or put forward these questions in the comment sections below i am looking forward for your responses so that i can uh, uh, give my answers in a more well structured way if you if you uh, want to uh, you know suggest some ways and means of improving uh, the delivery of content on this particular video please do let me know about that also so i'll be looking forward for your responses and uh, uh, responses which are related to text and uh, which are out of the text also so i hope you will help me improve my video making thank you so much and i whole of my wish all of you uh, all the very best thank you for watching this video